Surfing hippos. Mm. Every one of these cities has a local name. Whoa, gonna go. But the hippos are dangerous, like, for real. They look fat and like, it's not like Gloria in Madagascar. Uh, Fang has spoken with them. Um... Before we got married, so I'll see you later, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Mambo, naitwa Mengi, natoka Kenya. Ah, uh, bonjour, je m'appelle Mengi, je viens de Kenya. Okay. Hello guys, I'm here to do a, another geography now video. The video for today is geography. Uh, it's geography now Gabon. No, geography now Gabon. Um, but first of all guys, like, like, like the videos, subscribe to the channel, share the videos. You see me chill here, relax with the green t-shirt and putting my arms up. Anyways, not for real. Um, uh, just make Geography Now recommendations to react to and I will react to them. I promise I will get to Malawi, South Africa, was it India, Indonesia, uh, what are the other, other countries? Israel. Okay, first of all, what, what do I know about Gabon? I know that the capital is Libreville, but they also have another city. Well, it's called Port. And then the local name for Libreville is Komomonda. Franceville is the third largest city. The third, the second largest city has a name. It starts with Port something. Port Gentil. Well, I would have not been able to remember that. Because I don't look up information on these videos like right before a video. It just messes things up. Uh, so, and then the size of the country is 267,000 square kilometers. Now, uh, the national, but there are people who speak the same language as in Equatorial Guinea, which is Fang, Fang, I don't know if they say Fang, Fang is a super American way of saying it, uh, Fang, yeah, if it's Fang, if it sh shouldn't it be F-U-N-G, they have, uh, they have some oil, I said the national, the official language is French, they're part of the Central African Franc Zone, um, that's the CAMAC, Economic and Monetary Union of Central African States, or something like that. I don't know what to say, they're bordered by how many countries, Equatorial Guinea, Cameroon, Republic of Congo, three countries. Uh, the, in all these Central African nations, they are economically intertwined and, you know, they interact a lot because of the whole Central African Monetary Union thing. Now, beyond that, I actually don't know much of anything. Uh, Libreville is on a river. There's a river that, you know, just, you know what, let's just do the geography now reaction. <laughs> I'm just not going to embarrass myself. I know the most about nations within the East African community and then the rest of East Africa what we call Eastern Africa when we're in East Africa and then I know a bit about Central Africa and then there are the obvious the, the ones everybody knows Nigeria Egypt South Africa those are like you know, easy to know geography now Gabon you know geography now Gabon okay now extra energy Geography now Gabon. I'm gonna start playing the video in three, two, one. In three, two, one. Okay, I have three seconds to impress you enough to not get bored with another obscure African video. This place has surfing hippos. Surfing hippos. It's time to learn geography now. Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. Okay, so here's the deal. I know a lot of you guys are kind of like dismissing all the other smaller obscure African countries and you're just waiting for the big guys like Russia and India. However, Africa is an incredibly crucial continent to learn about because without it Okay, back at it. Humanity kind of wouldn't exist. So shut your yapples and cram this in your brain pipes. Let's find out stuff about Gabon, shall we? <laughs> ah, Gabon, Gabon, Gabon. Where are you and what are you all about? Well, Gabon is located in Central Africa just off the coast of the Atlantic Ocean, just a hop away from Sao Tome and Principe, bordered by Equatorial Guinea and Cameroon to the north, and the Republic of Congo to the east and south. The country is divided into nine provinces with the capital Libreville located 
northwest coast off the Atlantic. Gabon is also one of the 13 countries that are transected by the equator, passing just south of Libreville. You can actually drive on a road that passes right through it. By the way, the shape of Gabon kind of resembles a witch wearing a top hat. Gabon also has a dispute with the Mbanye and lesser islands of Conga and Cocoteros off the Atlantic with Equatorial Guinea. The UN has urged them to kind of settle the dispute and set maritime boundaries, but for now they're just kind of like, eh, whatever, we'll do it later. Fun side note, Gabon actually got its name from the Portuguese word Gabon, meaning cloak, since the rivers by Libreville were said to kind of look like that. Speaking of which, Libreville was kind of started by 52 freed slaves that were kind of just dropped off there by the French in 1846, hence the name Libreville or Freetown. And then about 20 years later, the French came in and took the place back. Speaking of which, again, the largest international airports are Libreville, Léon Mba International, and Port Gentil International. Gabon is booming economically right now. Despite the low population and workforce, civil engineering projects have exploded in the past few decades. The most impressive engineering project probably being the Trans-Gabon Railway, traversing about 670 kilometers from Libreville to Masuku, or Franceville, with 23 stops. Mm, every one of these cities has a local name. Uh, that isn't the French name, so I, I don't know. They're, they're, I feel like it's Africanized, and that's very many African societies. You'll find that, except in countries like Cote d'Ivoire, the language spoken in like a place like this, would at home, it would never be French. The lingua franca is never, it's something else. So, Komomonda, Masuku, Pogentil, I don't know. Pogentil? Pogentil? Jean. That E-N, you have to pronounce it like in a certain way. French. French guys. Basically the backbone of the whole country, transporting not only just people, but resources from the lush interior to the coast. Other notable landmarks might include the Léon Mba Memorial for Gabon's first president, the highly acclaimed Schweitzer Hospital in Lamberene, regarded as one of the top medical research units in Africa. In Franceville lies the International Center for Medical Research, one of the only two maximum biosafety level four containment labs in Africa, on the same level as the smallpox holding CDC building in Atlanta, Georgia. Not this Georgia, this Georgia. This Georgia will be up in two episodes. The famous Liana Bridge in Ogul. Way Lolo also sticks out, a flame of peace, the Omar Bongo statue, the interesting half man, half woman slave breaking free from bondage statue, and of course the presidential palace, which has been a hotbed of controversy because the president kind of spent way too many millions of dollars on it. To make things simple, the area of what is now Gabon used to be a French protectorate under French Equatorial Africa, not West Africa. Don't get those two mixed up. Just like Equatorial Guinea, the major cities in Gabon are thriving with oil money. This allows them to import luxury items and goods from all over the world. Libreville itself considered one of the most expensive. Okay, give me a second. I'm gonna continue in three, two, one. Each village in rural Gabon is considered to own about five kilometers of surrounding forest in every direction, which is why, like many other sub-Saharan African countries, you get these small round villages connected by long single stretches of road like knots on a string. In between these roads, you can find an abundance of something incredibly rare or found almost nowhere else on earth, which brings us to... Gorillas. I was talking about gorillas. Yeah, Gabon has the highest concentration of gorillas out of any country in the world and holds about 80% of the entire world's wild population. Whoa, despite that, the Whoa, national Whoa, gonna go see gorillas in Gabon. Gonna go see gorillas in Gabon. The Black Panther, as can be found on the coat of arms. By the way, bravo Marvel, I'm bringing him into the franchise. Gabon is absolutely- Like, really, like, and the Black Panthers is very cool. Packed with raw, unspoiled, heavily concentrated jungle and rainforest, making it the second most forested African country after Seychelles at about 85% of the entire landmass. Over 700 species of birds are found here alone and hundreds of mammal and reptile species as well. Don't miss out on the Makoku and Congo Falls, the Crystal Mountains, and try to discover and document one of the hundreds, if not thousands, of unexplored caves hidden deep within the jungle brush. Basically, the country is split into three physical regions, the coastal plain, the central highlands, and the thick jungle interior on the east side. In 2003, the government decided to designate a minimum of 10% of the land towards protected national parks and wildlife areas, the largest one being the Makebe National Park in the Northeast. And some of these places are pretty funky. For example, you have the Loango National Park along the coast, sometimes referred to as Africa's last Eden, as it's one of the only few places in the world where you can find inland savanna species like elephants and hippos playing and surfing along the ocean. So if there's one thing you're going to take away from this video... Uh, I hope they don't get carried away by the current. Uh, please, hippos. But the hippos are dangerous. Like... For real. They look fat and like they look like they can't run. But be careful of wild animals in Africa. They're, they're not like friendly or, you know, it's not like Gloria in Madagascar. Uh. Remember, Gabon has surfing hippos. 
Done. Just a skip away is the largest lake, Lake Onage and the Onage River, the largest one that's the most important body of water that flows across the entire country and was historically used as a major source of transport. Especially okay. to the cities of Moanda and Mosuku, or Franceville, known for being the mining capitals of Gabon. Now, despite the lush, heavy biodiverse region, Gabon really isn't too much of an agrarian society. Once again, just like Equatorial Guinea, this is because of oil in the early 70s offshore oil was discovered and they rolled that pony into the sunset oil makes up about 80 percent of the country's exports and about 45 percent of the overall gdp and 60 percent of state budget revenues despite the reduced role of other industries forestry actually has a sizable labor force cassavas plantains butter fruit and palm nuts are grown wherever farmlands exist palm nuts actually are a key ingredient in most national dishes few restaurants will serve it but if you can find the low-key venue you might even find the gabonese delicacy porcupine served in a stew if you find yourself in the right neighborhood you might even witness people drinking a drink made out of the Iboga root, a hallucinogenic substance that's typically used in rituals like in the Bweti faith where people claim to see Iboga root ancestors. And that's just the tip of the social iceberg. Let's see what else these Gabonese people are like. Okay, so they're probably most likely Bantu. Uh cuz that's that's a Bantu region. And then the Fan Let's see. People are probably thinking, okay, Gabon is just another French speaking African country, so what? There's like 20 of those. What's so special about them? Boy, sit your fat cheeks down and learn yourself some ethnic groups. First of all, almost the entire population of Gabon is made up of Bantu origins. For those of you who don't know, the Bantus are the largest classification of ethno linguistic Africans that stretch far across West and South and East Africa with over 600 tribes and about 500 languages spoken. Probably should have mentioned that in an earlier African episode, like Angola. The country has about 1.5 million people and is the fifth most sparsely populated country in Africa. The population is divided into three main people groups. The largest one being the Fang at about a third. Yeah. The at 10%, Fang is really spoken within... I was trying to pause the video. The computer wasn't pausing the video. Fang is spoken within... Um, yeah, in Equatorial Guinea and Gabon. French minority, and the rest is made up of other tribes like the Mayane, Pygmies, and other ethnic groups. They also use the Central African franc as their currency. They use the Type C plug outlet and they drive on the right side of the road. A little side note, all the countries that were part of the former French Equatorial Africa region use the Central African franc as their currency, and all the countries that were part of West Africa use the West African franc, except for Mauritania. Now you know. Gabon is often touted as Central Africa's most travel-friendly destination. There are also virtually no tensions between the ethnic groups, and intermarriages are very common. French is, of course, the official language used by all ethnic groups for cross communication However, each group also speaks their own language as well, typically at home or with friends and fam. Although little is known before European engagement, we do know that Pygmies inhabited the area of where the country is located now, but in the 14th century, the Great Bantu migration occurred, and soon they were either taken over or absorbed into dominating tribes. When it comes to culture, though, you have to understand Gabon is a nation burgeoning with incredibly vibrant customs, rituals, and mannerisms. Let's talk about the largest group, the Fang. The Fang is a sizable family of about 20 clans spread across Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea, Sao Tome and Principe, and the Republic of Congo, and Gabon. Now, people all over Africa make masks. However, it's disputed that genuine Fang masks are the most acclaimed and valued in the African art scene. Masks played a huge role in the Fang society, and they were used for everything from initiations to celebrations and funerals. Some people argue that other African groups took the inspiration from the Fang and imitated the elongated, droopy jawline format to exploit for themselves. Otherwise, the Mayane tribe is known for being masters of Rumba. The Punu and Vili are partakers in the Ekan rituals. The Mitsoka are known for taking part in the Bwet or the ceremony with the hallucinogenic root that we just talked about. About 60% of the population is under 25, and women have an average of four kids each. The weird thing is, almost everyone in the country gets married. However, many women are almost expected to have children before wedlock. This is partially because of a tradition that states that in case of the men and women split after marriage, all premarital offspring will belong to the woman, but children born after the marriage belong to the man. This ensures that the woman will have something just in case. It's kind of like a genetic prenup. Daddy, can I live with you? Well, see, son, you were born before we got married, so I'll see you later, okay? Keep in mind, this custom also applies to other African countries, too. How about with three times more Catholics than Protestants. Otherwise, small communities of indigenous beliefs also exist too. The country is run by President Ali Bango Undimba, son of Omar Bango Undimba, one of the longest serving heads of state in the world who ran from 1967 to 2009. We could go on and on talking about another president passing down the reins of his rule to his son or family member, but I'm sure you can figure it all out. We gotta move on. 
Okay, let me put it this way. Gabon is kind of like the little sister of the Congos that got rich and changed her last name. France and Gabon have been getting along very well even after independence in 1960. They are the largest importer as the Gabonese love their cheese and foie gras. And the 6th Marine Infantry Battalion of the French military is also stationed at Gabon. Former President Bongo is even quoted for saying, Africa without France is like a car without a driver, but France without Africa is like a car with no petrol. Surprisingly though, a lot of Gabonese people will say that Morocco and Trinidad and Tobago are good friends. President Bongo is good friends with King Mohammed VI and a large number of Gabonese students study abroad in Morocco. Trinidad and Tobago may be small, but they do big business with Gabon, as about 6% of all of their imports come from Gabon, making it their closest African economic ally. In terms of their best friends, however, since childhood, Gabon has always kind of had a little crush on Cameroon. Sing it with me. Everybody loves Cameroon, but especially Gabon. They share similar ethnic groups, cultures, languages. They love visiting each other, even though Equatorial Guinea kind of gets in the way and interrupts their conversations. In conclusion, to the untrained eye, all the small, obscure African nations are kind of hard to distinguish from each other. However, I encourage you to look a little closer because then, and only then, will you find certain hippos. Stay tuned, an even smaller and more obscure African country, but with a higher population, the Gambia is coming up next. You see, like, I think, in, in like, that's, that's the reaction. I think in, like, American schools, in America, you'll hear them add the to everything. It's the Democratic Republic of the Congo. We never learned it that way. And we still speak like English. It's a Democratic Republic of Congo. It's not the Gambia, it's Gambia. It's not the Ukraine, it's just Ukraine. That's how we learned it. And then I came to learn that there's another version of English where the is added to everything. Anyway, Google Maps is not like that and all that. Uh, uh, that's the geography now, Gabon reaction. I will say, I will say, I will say. Um, these Central African nations are interesting. I mean, they all share similar cultures. I mean, yeah, of course, the closest nation to Gabon is, is a country like Cameroon. Um, because of the people, the culture, and the history, all these countries are sort of like intertwined. Cameroon, uh, I will say this, Cameroon is the largest economy in, Central, in the Central African region. It has the largest population as well. So after Cameroon, I think it's Chad that has the second largest population, something like that. Um, and yeah, that's all these Central African nations. I'm going to do Sao Tome and Principe uh, later. Uh, now I'm going to move on, I guess, the islands within the east coast of Africa. I'm going to do the seashells and then the Comoros. Uh, but this was interesting. What did I find out? The, the hallucinogenic. The, the masks were so cool. That is so, so cool. The ceremonies with the masks. That is so, so cool. So more like that. I like that. Uh, anyway, Asantini Sana, thank you. Mercy. Mercy. Uh, I'll see y'all later. Before we got married, so I'll see you later, okay? Keep in mind, this custom also applies to other African countries. How about <laughs> Ha 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 